but teens. I wanted to leave this one a little longer, but if you can see, it's so soft, you can mush it. So we need to pick this one now. Depending on how long I'm going to hold them for, I usually pull the stem out here. But this one probably is so ripe, there's no latex to drain. You can see the stem comes right out. That's a ripe breadfruit. Sometimes it's hard to choose. And then you can move back the branches and find one that was hiding. When you pick one at this stage, there'll be a lot of latex. And it's good to flip it over and let some of that drain out makes it easier later when you're cleaning it and then it won't get inside the flesh so put them down here to rest you can clean off the latex on the skin later see how between the shapes and the eyes it's getting dark and it's also oozing sap compare that to these ones you can see that this one is much further along and this is a male flower female flowers look like a small version of that is a very ripe breadfruit that I picked about five, six days ago. You can see on the skin starting to form lines, distinct lines. And also, I picked this breadfruit yesterday. I cleaned these two up because I'm gonna bake them. You can see these ones have much more latex on the skin. They haven't been washed off scrub yet. So when you bake a breadfruit you want to be sure especially with the hard ones to make a way for steam to come out so I usually cut a small X like that and then where the stem was cut a little bit out gets hard after it sits so you can make a little bit of a pathway for the heat to exit so that it doesn't explode and then clean the knife so you don't push dirt into the breadfruit this one's much softer have the yeah you can see how much easier it is to cut in oh well I don't think the steam's gonna have trouble getting out so I just separated it a bit piece out just in case 
and I'm gonna bake them separately. It's easier to bake them separately, but I wanted to cut the X in now and clean them. So for the one that's picked yesterday, you can see it's very firm still, but it's still yellow and it's starting to form lines around the eyes. I've been baking these at 400 degrees for 30 minutes. That's been the... method. So put it in like that, 400, and we'll get back to it. These bad boys are sitting out to cool down. Just got done roasting. Now the two breadfruits are done with the baking stage, so we're going to open up the riper one. Let's see. Oh, you can see how it poofed out once it finished. That is the riper one, and then here was the one I picked today. They smell really good, like bread. So at this stage, you can eat this. I usually don't eat this part that looks a little hollow, and I don't eat this middle part. I try to eat between here and here and take the skin off. So I'll take some of that off. Um, This one tastes very much like a baked potato at this stage, so I'm going to process this one further by cleaning out the middle and the skin and then frying it in a pan. Now I'm going to try this one that was a little bit riper. So this riper breadfruit that I baked, that I picked a few days ago, or five days ago, if you taste it at this stage. It's a little closer to a sweet potato, but they're, they're much denser than a potato. And when they become fried, they really, uh, the characteristic becomes pronounced, the difference in quality. This is also kind of interesting too. It's almost like a, a little bit more developed than I've usually seen. So this is what the two breadfruits look like, processed. I left this one halfway done so I can show an easy method. After cutting it in half, you can cut it into a quarter and then slice that into a thinner slice. And then cut that part out. Skin out. It's a little easier to see if you hold it this way. So these, the longer pieces are from the smaller riper breadfruit. It's more of a Play-Doh-like consistency or doughy after uh,
baking. We just have a little bit of Crisco and olive oil mix in the pan. And now these square pieces are from the firmer, larger breadfruit. And we'll see a little comparison. Riper, more fit breadfruit versus a little bit greener one. So I just fry them on every side and keep flipping them until they're golden brown, like any other french fried type item. So these uh, small riper ones finished quicker because they're smaller. And now I'm uh, finishing these larger ones up. They're already cooked and edible before you fry them, so the goal is to just get a nice toasted outside and unlock true flavor and uh, I like to put salt on them too at this stage and just so for the record it's canola oil and olive oil are the two oils that I mix but you could use either or and then this unprocessed or it's processed this is baked but not fried this will go in the freezer for later. It holds very well in the freezer. So now we're going to try each. Let's see what the verdict is. It tastes like a buttered mashed potato but sweeter and like a french frying cornbread maybe a pancake that's what the ripe small one tastes like now we'll taste a piece of the firmer larger one It's very good, probably would fry it a little more. Very similar to a French fry, almost identical to a French fry flavor. And uh, just for a closer shot. And I'm gonna finish eating this. It's been a, quite a journey.